I bring you greetings from Ghana, especially from your three partners, the Greenwich Congregation, Redemption Congregation, and from Hoka. Today, the entire Christian community celebrates World Communion Sunday, a day set aside to demonstrate the unity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the breaking of bread. The importance of this celebration is to demonstrate that as followers of Jesus Christ, we are one people both in spirit and in body. Our theme for this morning is an urgent call to selflessness, an urgent call to selflessness. Our text is from Philippians 2, 1 to 4. Let us pray. Our gracious God, we are grateful for a beautiful day like this. Even as we are about to share the word of God, I pray that you will speak through us. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Paul worked in Philippi during his second missionary journey. And at the time he was writing this letter, he was in prison in Rome. The church in Philippi brings Paul a lot of joy. Whilst in prison, the church will send delegation to bring aid or gifts to Paul. Even in prison, Paul remembers the church and writes them this letter. Paul writes to encourage them to even, even do more, more for, for the, the body, body of Christ. Christ. A theme, an urgent call to selflessness. Under it, I will look at three points. Number one, Jesus Christ, our standard, labored for us so that we can reap the benefits. Number two, Paul, our good example, labored selflessly so that we may reap the benefits. And finally, we must labor not for ourselves, but for our communities so that they would also reap the benefits in Jesus Christ. Now let's look at the first point. Jesus Christ, our standard, labored for us so we can reap the benefits. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul reminds the Philippian church of the benefits they have enjoyed because of their unity in Jesus Christ. Their fellowship with Jesus Christ has brought them many benefits. This includes being encouraged, being comforted, and having fellowship with the spirits, having tenderness and compassion. It is important to note that as believers, we enjoy these benefits in Jesus Christ today. But he had to be selfless, suffer humiliation, and even death, death on the cross. So we are able to reap these benefits. Today, we are being called urgently to emulate Jesus Christ, to work hard as believers, to bring many to enjoy the benefits that we enjoy today, and even to enjoy the bigger benefits of eternal life. I want you to always remember that to be like Christ, you must seek the interests of others. Now let's look at our second point. Paul, our good example, labored selflessly so that we may reap the benefits. The Apostle Paul, in his effort to preach the gospel, was faced with many, 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 many challenges. He was beaten. In some instances, the Jews plotted to kill him. In some cities, they beat and dragged him out of their cities. He was imprisoned. It was when Paul was in prison that he wrote this letter to the Philippians. Yes, I can say that even though Paul was restricted and in some cases had chains, Paul admonished the believers in Philippians 2.2 2, to be like-minded, to have the same love, and to be of one spirit and purpose. Can we say, as believers, we are one-minded? Can we say, irrespective of our restrictions, we also are selfless and will pursue the work as Paul and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did? To be like Christ, you must seek the interests of others. Now, my third point. We must labor not for ourselves, but for our community. In Philippians 2, 3, Paul cautions believers on two issues, not to pursue selfish ambitions and not to look out for our personal interests only. 
Unfortunately, in our world today, we have become very self-centered. Some societies applaud individualism as against interdependency. The generation of today has been taught to trust in nobody but to trust in themselves. They believe they are the best at all times. And so they end up thinking and putting themselves first, putting their happiness first, putting their entitlements, their rights, and everything first, wealth and others, to mention but a few. They do all this at the neglect of the community. Today, the generation is battling with hoarding as against sharing. Unfortunately, this attitude of self-centeredness has found itself in the church. Congregations seek their own interests and neglect the communities that they find themselves in. In some cases, they shut the door to other deprived congregations. Let me share an experience with you. Last month, I was very fortunate to visit two churches. In the first church, I visited their children departments. I was very excited what I saw. They had a very beautiful edifice. The children, I would say, were over-resourced. They had everything it takes to make worship for children very comfortable. I was very glad. And then I moved on to the next congregation. That will be about an hour's drive between the two congregations. To my surprise, this other congregation's children's department worshipped in a wooden structure that is very old and half broken. The chairs, most of them are broken. To my surprise, the children in this congregation worship in the wooden structure that is old and broken in some parts. Almost all the chairs or the furniture in there were broken, and yet the children come and struggle or manage to sit. The children were resourced with nothing but a whiteboard that their teachers will write on. As I went home, I began reflecting on both churches for the children. Tears filled my eyes. As I went home, I began reflecting on what I saw. I looked at the first church and compared it to the second church. My eyes were filled with tears and my tears began to drop. Then I asked, what is about our generation that does not make us eager to share? What is about this generation that puts itself first and neighbors not second but last? And the ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he responded to the needs of all. To the rich like Zacchaeus, he invited and went to their homes. The needs of the poor, blind Bartimaeus, Jesus responded when he called passionately. He responded to the needs of the widow, the sick, and the demon possessed, to mention but a few. He has called us not to measure our success by the number of people who follow us on social media, but by the number of people we are able to follow with the message of the love of Jesus Christ to bring them from darkness to light. Remember, to be like Christ, you must seek the interests of others. Paul admonishes us in Philippians 2, 4, where he says, we should all look not for our own interest, but for the interest of others. At this point, I want to pause and say a big thank you to the Westminster Presbyterian Church in Albany. It is amazing how this congregation seek the interest of the poor and deprived around the world. I have watched in humility how this congregation have partnered and helped in Sierra Leone, in Liberia, and most especially for me in Ghana, where I see you contribute in no small way to alleviate poverty for some very deprived communities and turn hopeless situations around and the areas of education, healthcare, among others. It is for these reasons that we have been called to preach the gospel to all nations and demonstrate the love of Christ. I however urge you to even do more individually and collectively in the community that God has placed you and in the world at large. To the Westminster Presbyterian Church, I say, I call. 
And my conclusion, some may ask, how do we seek the interest of others? Think about your neighbor. Does he or she know Christ? How can you make time and present Jesus Christ to that neighbor of yours? Can you ask one sitting next to you what their challenges are and how you can help them? Will you take time off your busy schedule and make a call to someone who is sick in the hospital to pray with the person and to bring the person to the salvation knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? We need to take our eyes off ourselves and begin to look at others through the eyes of Jesus Christ. Remember, to be like Christ, you must seek the interests of others. This indeed is an urgent call to selflessness. Jesus Christ, our standard, labored for us so we will reap the benefit. Paul, our good example, labored selflessly so that we may reap the benefit. We must labor not for ourselves, but for our communities, so that the community will reap the benefits in knowing Jesus Christ. I came to remind you that as you do this, God in heaven will bless you with every blessing that you need. Remember, to be like Christ, you must seek the interest of others. Thank you. Let us pray. Our gracious God, this morning we are grateful for your word that has come to us. We want to be like Jesus Christ. We want to live our lives for others. We want to be like Paul. So, so that, that even when we are restricted with God, we will still pursue to do your work. Grant us your strength that we will be able to do this. In the name of God alone, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.